Hey guys, uh, thanks for tuning in to another broadcast. Today I want to talk about Last Jedi, or more specifically, Ryan Johnson's middle finger chin scratch to confident men. So, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about in terms of the chin scratch, um, there's a famous politician, famous president, who did this quite regularly just need to Google it, you'll, you'll figure out who it is pretty fast. So every time this guy, I've seen this with other people before, but he's the most famous one. Um, whenever he was speaking about political opponents or to them, to them he had this kind of uh, habit of scratching his face, either his eye or his chin or his nose, cheek, whatever. And uh, But he always used his middle finger and it was like this kind of passive aggressive perhaps subconscious sort of thing to his opponents. And that's kind of how I have interpreted Ryan Johnson's Last Jedi. Uh, I feel as though, especially 80s men, this, this is a middle finger face scratch to anyone who's an 80s guy, uh, late 70s, early 80s guy, grew up loving Star Wars, the mythology, surrounding it. Um, this is him saying, uh, yeah, uh, you guys, I don't like anything you represent, and uh, I'm going to subvert masculinity. And uh, so here's the deal. Spoiler, 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 because I know people get mad when I don't mention it. Um, this is going to be filled with spoilers. So if you don't want spoilers, tune out now. So all right, so I saw Star Wars, Last Jedi, last night, and the more that I think about this movie, the more I dislike it. And I, there's elements of it. It's obviously, um, you know, aesthetically, it's a it's a very striking movie. There's all sorts of scenes that are they're beautiful. Um, the cinematography, the sound, um, all that sort of stuff very quality what I would expect from from mr. Johnson now when you get into the actual story essentially this entire movie every single male character behaves like a buffoon and they either make the problems in the movie worse or if they do something that turns out to be heroic like Luke in the end, it's because he listens to a woman. So again, there's nothing inherently wrong with taking a woman's advice, uh, but the way that this movie has been crafted, um, any sort of, the, everything that you loved about, you know, Poe Dameron being this swashbuckling pilot, uh, kind of like Han in the past, he was the, uh, you know, going balls to the wall, uh, taking chances, um, courageous, you know, um, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's that's frowned upon in this sort of movie. And um, which makes it even more strange. And some of this could have been, my, my criticisms could have been tempered um, if they would have adjusted some of the story. So there's like a subplot in this story, this general, right? After Poe Dameron is demoted um, early in the story, after you know buying the rebels' time, once again being an awesome pilot, he obviously does his own thing. Whatever Leia demotes him, but the fact of the matter is, is he's an awesome dude, and he's a key member of you know uh, the resistance at this point in time. So she comes up with this plan to save their fleet or whatever that is in danger by the first order blah blah, blah. and uh but she doesn't tell him key details it's just like yeah she treats him like he's a private in like the army or something i was like i don't need to tell you and uh it's something that a guy of his stature and his clout you would have never kept this information from him and if she would have just told him it would have completely you know he would have either been logically been on with the plan or it would have made sense, the writers would have had to come up with a reason why he would undermine her. But as it is, she acted like a complete idiot, 
didn't tell him a key detail of her plan, just expected him to just blindly follow it because she's who she is. And like I said, this is Poe is not some pogue, you know. Uh, he's not some loser guy. Uh, he's Poe Dameron, as established in the first movie. Um, you know, even if he's demoted, you're going to treat him with a certain amount of respect. Not, uh, was it Laura Dern uh, in real life? Not, not her character. So, so that's that. There's an entire subplot to the movie that is kind of ridiculous and unnecessary. Um, you know, in the first movie, everyone liked Poe and Finn together, and in this one, they just, the chemistry that they had together, you know, people wanted them to be gay, whatever, um, but the fact of the matter is, is they had chemistry, you wanted to see these guys together, doing something, nope, we're not gonna do that, uh, we're just gonna totally, uh, sideline Poe, and Finn is going to have his own sort of strong female, strong female with him who is going to teach him a lesson or two because all the men in this movie need to be taught a lesson. Um, Luke, again, uh, you know, the late 70s, the original trilogy, the, the 80s, um, they were defined, there were certain moments that defined good versus evil, um, you know, uh, that defined Luke as a character. In this movie, Luke, he essentially becomes a crazy homeless man. And, uh, you know, uh, or, you know, people, some sort of, like, homeless veteran or something that just, like, rambling. He's a shell of him for his former self. And uh, just a very sad situation where you're like, would this, would this really happen this way? Um, and at the start of the movie, which is, like, really ridiculous... Um, you know, after the the last movie, you know, uh, The Force Awakens, it ends where Rey, she hands him his lightsaber. This movie, it starts off, she gives him the lightsaber, and uh, what do you think is going to happen? Well, he literally just chucks it over his shoulder in this, like, cartoonish way. And, um, you know, just kind of blatant disrespect. Um... Throughout the movie, uh, there, you know, there's this idea you need to kill the past, destroy it, and um, and then towards the end, Luke, after he's inspired by Ray, of course, uh, he then, <laughs> sorry, just laughing, it's amazed at a power. Um, then he is tries to sort of like redeem himself he force projects himself into this battle whole, you know that's a whole other issue um but now i'm losing track but yeah luke he is just a shell of his, his former self and uh you just would not expect this uh, of the character um it was really disappointing you're essentially guys who grew up in the 80s like myself we are a key the whole reason why the franchise is what it is is because of the good versus evil dynamic that was set up in the originals and the, the heroics of these men and oh that that's what i was going to say so there's this you have to destroy the past you have to kill it so this is ryan johnson in many ways saying to guys like me that I am going to kill your idea of Luke. I'm going to kill everything that made Star Wars popular because of your toxic masculinity. Um, that's the underlying theme. It's a very subversive, one of my friends said a subversive movie. And I, I totally agree with that. So now, again, the end of the movie, it's like, we got to learn from our mistakes. Okay, well, that's a good message. We do need to learn from mistakes. But the message is is that the masculinity of, you know, younger Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, the masculinity of Poe Dameron, the masculinity of Finn, the masculinity of Kylo, um, pretty much every male throughout the, the Jedi's history is toxic. We gotta kill it. And so much so that they gotta kill the Jedi religion. Now, 
my buddy C.S. Lewis, people know that I, I love to quote C.S. Lewis, he was talking about Christianity in this, but this, re this relates to the Star Wars mythology as well. So he says, as myth transcends thought, incarnation transcends myth, the heart of Christianity is a myth which is also a fact. We must not be ashamed of the mythological radiance resting on our theology. The belief that myth in general is not merely misunderstood history nor diabolical illusion, but at its best, a real though unfocused glean of divine truth falling on human imagination. Now, again, in the Star Wars universe, we are to take the myth of the Jedi as fact when we are entering into that universe. The Jedi religion is fact. And as C.S. Lewis would say, that the Jedi religion um, to us is a real though unfocused glean of divine truth falling on human imagination. That's at, a, at a, a subconscious level, people don't always understand, but that's one of the things that made Star Wars so popular. So what Ryan Johnson is doing is he's deconstructing, he's dis destroying the myth. He's saying, you know, he talks about how um, essentially both sides are, are silly men fighting over nothing. They have to get rid of this religion. But here's the thing. When you destroy the religion, when you destroy the spirituality, it's it's not, then what? So you have Rey, and what is she a part of now? Uh, they're saying this like, you know, we're going to be the spark that lights the fire that, that kills the First Order. But what is Rey fighting for exactly without the Jedi religion? If it just becomes, it is what it is, it's a very nihilistic universe uh, when you have destroyed the religion. And then it's just a battle of preferences, of personal preferences. Um, in the originals, you had good versus evil, light versus dark. Um, it was good is a real thing. Evil is a real thing. And people can get behind that. That's, that's the mythology. But in the Last Jedi universe, where nature just is what it is, and it's just people, it's just a battle for power uh, between people that believe one thing or people that believe another thing, they're fighting for nothing. It's just, it doesn't even make any sense. You need to have something. So if you destroy the Jedi religion, and it's just, well, Ray's good because I agree with Ray, and you know, uh, there's really no reason why Ray's worldview is is any better than Kylo's at this point. If you if you continue to pull the string, if you follow Ryan's logic, um, you know, if you follow his argument to its logical conclusion, the the universe is meaningless. Um, and at the end, that's the other thing is you had this moment where on some level it is impressive that Luke had such a mastery of the force that he could force project himself or whatever. But the fact remains is that he did not physically come to the rebels aid. He, it's like, he's like, I gotta do, uh, I guess I gotta do this. And, you know, it's like, and uh, he obviously died at the end because of the, the effort exerted, but it's like he was doing it almost he had to be pulled kicking and screaming. It's like, you know, pulling teeth to get him to do the right thing in the end. You know, there's this moment where, you know, all, you know, Kylo focuses all of the, the machinery, the, the, um, the First Order's, you know, weapons on him. And you think that he's going to be affected, and he's not. Now, obviously, this is a force projection. That's what it turned out. But initially, you don't know that. And you're like, oh, this is very, very cool. Luke came to the aid just kind of like Han, you know, in the original trilogy. You know, it's the scoundrel. You think he's going to do his own thing, but he came back. He did the right. No. Nope. Luke decided to phone it in. Um, very millennial-ish. He'd rather just have an av avatar deal with it from afar than actually face-to-face -face deal with this opponent in person. And uh, it was uh, it, it was very... 
very 2017 we'll just put it that way um, very disappointing and I think a lot of guys would have forgiven a lot of the movie if if it would have been a face-to-face -face battle between Kylo and Luke but no it's just force projection and uh, you know he did buy time for the rebels but again it wasn't actually him and earlier in the movie they show his x-wing fighter um, it's in the water it's in the ocean kind of like an empire and you think oh maybe he's going to lift he's gonna get the beacon you know Leia's in trouble and just like in Empire he's going to lift his you know his x-wing out um, maybe they could have had like R2 left behind you could somehow fixed it who knows what I don't know um, but bring Luke you know back in person to handle Kylo one-on-one. -on -one. And he could have died for whatever reason during the battle, um, but it could have been an honorable death. It could have been, you know, um, like something out of, uh, you know, a samurai death uh, where it's honorable and he did the right thing. He saved the people that he needed to save, but in the end, it's, it would be like Obi-Wan um, dying and you're like, okay, he did it for the proper reason. Now, I suppose fans of this movie will say, well, Luke did that too. But again, it's it's the force projection on some level, very impressive. But on a your gut level, um, um, people want man to man. They want they want to see good and evil clash face to face. And in many ways, Luke was a coward. Now, and then here's the other thing, Luke in the movie was essentially the abusive uncle. Um, and I was even telling my wife, it's like in the middle of the night, you see this lightsaber. There's all sorts of like weird, you could even get into like weird Freudian sexual, you know, Kylo wakes up in the middle of the night and this just lightsaber lights up with Luke crazy eyes. He's turned into disgusting uncle, um, abusive. Uh, and you wonder why he turned to the dark side. And you're like, would Luke really do that? The guy who in the original trilogy felt as, a, as though there was good in his his father until the very last second. And that's the lesson that he learned in the original trilogy. This one, no, he, he gives in to a moment of darkness or whatever and, uh, you know, contemplates killing um, his nephew. And you're like, would he really do that? Would that really happen? I think guys that grew up in the uh, late 70s and in the 80s, they would most of them would say no. Now, going forward, with the franchise, you have just ticked off generations of guys, of men, confident men, and even women. I'm sure there's plenty of women that were very disappointed in uh, the way this is handled as well. These movies are very expensive to make, and you have just ticked off. You, Ryan Johnson, you, Disney, and everyone involved with this project at the, the upper echelons, um, I... I cannot believe that they did this because I, in the future, I have no, I'm not going to go see the next one opening weekend. I don't have, maybe I will if I don't have anything else going on, but yeah, you said, you know, you wanted to kill the past. Um, that's a good way to do it. Ryan Johnson is just totally, um, you know, deconstruct Luke Skywalker and turn him into creepy uncle Luke. And, um, you know, it's sad because um, I actually didn't mind the first one. I thought at least J.J. Abrams, all the the faults that it had, you know, people say Ray, Mary Sue, whatever. Um, I felt as though J.J. Abrams had a, a reverence and a love for the original trilogy, and he was trying to set the stage to move into the future while honoring the past. And in this one, I felt as though this is subversive, anti masculine anti-strong confident male uh propaganda and a lot of people might not see it but it's there and this is not storytelling in the c.s lewis sense of the word in terms of mythology good and evil are, are real things this is like i said this is a nihilistic um you know Everybody just does their own thing. There's a, there's a moment in time 
where Benicio Del Toro's guy, he just says, you know, like, one day you're going to blow up the, the, them, the next day they're going to blow up you. It's, it's all pointless, you know? Um, everyone just fights, and any violence whatsoever is always wrong because it's always wrong. And it, it doesn't even acknowledge that, you know, sometimes self-defense for a good cause, a just cause, is necessary and proper. And in this, it's just a very bleak, um, very bleak worldview. And it's asking you to care about characters uh, within a universe where now it's like, you know, um, good and evil has essentially been watered down to my side versus your side. It's, it's who do you like more? It, it doesn't really matter. There's no moral authority tied to it because, you know, it's just the force. It just, it is what it is. Um, and it's, it's sad. So I, I don't even know what to say about this movie. I guess I'll wrap it up here just to say that the more I think about this movie, I, it's, it looks good and um, it's got you know a Millennium Falcon in it it's it's got lightsabers and it's got people that that are going through the motions but the heart and soul of what you expect out of a Star Wars movie it's not there at all um, it's gone and yeah so like I said you want to destroy the past um, you did it Ryan Johnson and uh, you want us to move into the future but it's a future where men like Luke Skywalker, men like Poe Dameron, uh, you're the bad guy. And uh, the good guy is the self-righteous general who refuses to tell the other men that deserve to be told what's going on, uh, leaves them in the dark. Why? Because men are stupid. And if they would just listen to women like her, or she, and Rose, and Ray, and Leia, the world would be a better place. So, uh, you could decide. You want a Star Wars franchise um, based on purple hair, self-righteous general, leaving guys in the dark? Or would you rather have a Star Wars franchise based on Luke Skywalker, you know, willing to fight evil, but also willing to show mercy to his father, refusing to, to kill, fight his father to the death because he believes that deep down inside, um, everyone has a redemptive quality to them. If they would just, uh, you know, embrace, if they would just see that they were worthy of redemption and that until your last breath, you can, you can choose to be good within your heart, within your soul, within your will, you can choose goodness, but good and evil are very real things. Um, which franchise would you rather have? I'd rather have this Star Wars, the, the Star Wars of, you know, um, Return of the Jedi and uh, the original trilogy. So that's my take. Sure, some of you will disagree, but like I said, this is an attack on a subversive middle finger chin scratch to confident, strong men in masculinity. And, uh, you know, it appears as though it's, it's showing critic reaction, fan reaction, very, very telling lately on a lot of these movies. There's reasons behind all of this. And uh, hopefully I, I've kind of explained it for you guys, at least one element of it. So that's about it for now. Thanks to everyone who's tuned in. Thanks to everyone who's subscribed. Patreon members, Super Chat people that have donated welcome and uh yeah there'll be more in the future also uh i love comics and angle teens channel i guess i was voted um for his particular channel uh I, I think the strongest or best comic reviewer of 2017 so anybody who voted for that uh i appreciate it it is very humbling thank you just want to make sure i say thank you to everyone who did that i saw that last night after i got out of last jedi so again guys Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next time. See ya.